Hello, Anthony Samra for BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and this is my second video in my series of videos to help you be a better conversationalist. My series of videos called How to Make Small Talk. And my first video, we talked about how small talk's often thought of as trivial or trite because, ah, you know, who wants to talk about the weather or what do you do? I'm sick and tired of being asked that question. But actually, it's not really the content of what's being said that's the most important thing. It's the feeling that's created between two people. So if you learn to get good at small talk, you can actually craft it to give you the opportunities to talk about more things that you're actually interested in. And you can find it as a way to connect with new people. Because when we don't really know new people, we're trying to figure out how much of ourselves we can show and how much we want to hold back. And if you become the most comfortable person in the interaction, then you become the person who gets to choose how authentic to be. And by leading in those kinds of interactions, you're actually giving other people permission to relax and be more themselves. When you're leading in social situations to the degree that you can allow yourself um, the luxury of being relaxed and being more yourself, you're encouraging and empowering other people to do the same. So today I wanna to teach you a really great trick that will help you in any social situation be more chatty and be more confident speaking about yourself and the things that you wanna do. And you'll be glad to know it's really, really easy. So, um, because what I was thinking about is a lot of the advice on communication skills centers around being a really good listener and they say things like, oh, you should ask people questions because people love talking about themselves. And it is true that people do love talking about themselves, but when do they love talking about themselves? It's when they feel relaxed and they don't feel judged and they feel easy to connect with someone, then they feel like they can volunteer more and they can speak about themselves. The truth is when you first meet someone, if you start asking them a ton of questions, it basically makes them feel like they're the ones that have to do all the work. No one wants to be in the position of having to do all the work. In fact, when you make, meet someone new, it's perfectly normal if you want to get the conversation going to do 60 to even 90% of the talking at first. What you're doing is you're giving them some material to work with that they can riff off and think about because see, when you really know someone, you don't actually ask them a lot of questions. You do ask them questions sometimes, and it's good to think of interesting questions to ask. But when you speak to your pals, usually people just riff off each other. Someone says something, and you hear that, and you think of some associations, and you riff off of that. You, you reply back. Not a lot of questions asked. You just have a kind of more free-flowing uh, conversation. One takes off the other. So asking tons of questions uh, can basically make someone feel like they're in the spotlight, they have to perform, they might just be as socially anxious as you are, they might be worried of you judging them. So the idea is that getting to be a confident speaker is as important as being a confident listener. How do you know when the other person is receptive and ready for you to ask them more questions? Uh, a good rule of thumb, is wait till they ask you a question about you. And um, before that, you can provide more of the material in the in the conversation. And um, you can tell a little story about yourself or um, state your opinion on something before asking them a question. Or if you wanted to ask someone an outlandish question like, um, what's one of the your favorite places that you've ever been? Um, earlier in an interaction, someone might freeze up, oh, I don't know, you know, you don't want to get told I don't know when you ask a question. <laughs> There's nothing more frustrating than that. A great thing to do is just answer the question first. Um, the other year, uh, last year, I went on holiday to France and I saw the Eiffel Tower and we went and had a coffee in this cafe and this thing happened. By volunteering information, you're actually helping the other person think of something to say. You're actually making it easier for them to open up. 
So when they get on a roll and if they're talking a lot, definitely step back, let them take up the slack, let them do the, le uh, the leg work and remember what they usually say, the con communication skills, which is um, people love talking about themselves and it's great to be a good listener. And actually in a future video, I'm going to give you some techniques to help you become a better listener and help people feel like they're really understood by you. If you think this use is useful, please don't keep it to yourself. Smash the share button so that I can get this information out to more people who might have social anxiety or they might be a bit shy or they might actually be quite confident outwardly, like me, like I was, whereas inside they feel socially anxious. You know, sometimes extroverted people are socially anxious as well. So one thing to remember is talking is how you show your values and um, shows how shows that you actually can give people say something interesting and give people a reason to talk to you and it sets the tone for a conversation so if you talk freely you're giving the other person to talk freely and if you act really self-consciously you're putting responsibility on the other person to coach you and this is maybe some of the reason why some socially anxious people are more socially anxious because they don't they know that they're not um, providing too much of the material and they're worried that they're putting the responsibility on other people to coach them so it's good to step up and take up the responsibility and it'll open doors for you in terms of connection so in the early stages of an interaction asking questions is value taking and the later stages of the interaction it's value giving because you're giving someone your ears so the easiest way to be familiar is to act familiar and do this riffing off people um, and one of the best exercises i can think of and you can practice this this is the great thing about this exercise you can actually go out and practice this in conversations without seeming like a weirdo is when you contribute to something to discussion think of that as the subject so i might someone might ask me where i'm from now if i say glasgow then they, supposing I'm abroad, they say, Glasgow, Where, where's Glasgow? And I say, oh, it's in Scotland. Mm, that's interesting, I've heard of Scotland. The, the conversation will taper off into nothing. But supposing I say Glasgow, right, that's my subject. Now I'm gonna tack on another bit of information to that. And I'm gonna say, it's the biggest city in Scotland. And then I'm going to comment on what I've just said. Although Edinburgh is the capital of Scotland, and then I'm going to tack on um, a reflection on that. So I'll say something like, um, Glas people say that Glasgow is more friendly than Edinburgh, but Edinburgh um, is more beautiful. Now, supposing I said that to someone when I first met them abroad and they asked me where I was from, I've just given them so many things that they can riff off. They can talk about beautiful cities versus friendly cities. They can talk about what they know about Scotland. They can talk about their city or their country and if it has a rivalry with another city. They can tell you about their city and about the other, the other um, its relationship to another city and so forth. What you're doing is you're lubricating the conversation because every potential strand is a hook that someone's imagination can hook onto they, it might remind them of a story but if you're really miserly with the information you give if you don't give people a lot to work with you're making it hard to talk to so my tip to practice is when you whenever you answer a question or when you volunteer information think of the first thing as your subject and then automatically tack something onto that just listen to what you said and say something else you know about it then make a comment on your comment and if you like you can then um relate it to some reflection or say how it makes you feel because a lot of the time those of us who have trouble or natively had trouble with making small talk or ch chatting around new people um we can get really in our heads and we only talk about intellectual or philosophical subjects a really great thing to do is say how that how you feel about that yourself uh, tie it to your feelings you know um and that that's a good way to introduce a uh, more kind of connective conversation so 
don't be miserly with your information and uh, don't be miserly with your shares. If you think this this video would be useful, um, send it in Facebook Messenger to a few people that you think might find this video series interesting because the more people see it, the more I'll be encouraged to do it. Above all, don't be hard work. You know, see if someone asks you a question. Don't vacuum them by just giving a one word answer. If someone says like, uh, what do you do? Don't go, um, I'm a whatever it is you do. Um, people ask you that all the time. If you want to change the subject, you can say, I'm a accountant, but I'm more interested in, I'm going to be really cheesy and say chess because accountants play chess, you know. You can change the subject on, to, well, I'll make a whole video on changing the subject if you want a whole video on it anyway i think that's quite enough for one self-help video i hope you enjoyed it and if you did enjoy it please don't hesitate to share it thanks very much for joining me